ESPN Scouts Inc.'s Todd McShay. Todd, how will these reported tests affect their status? You know, in and, in and of itself, Chris, it's not a terrible thing. It's happened before. We've seen some players fail drug tests from marijuana. Calvin Johnson did. Gaines Adams did. It didn't affect their draft stock. The frustration for NFL teams, though, is the timing of it. Knowing that you're going to the NFL scouting combine, knowing exactly what day you're going to be tested, knowing basically within the hour that you're going to be tested in that day, and still failing the test shows one of two things to NFL teams. A, stupidity. B, it's a habitual problem, and that could affect your, your draft status. Both things, actually, could affect your draft status. No one wants a wide receiver that's stupid, and no one wants a, a wide receiver that has a habitual drug issue. So, to me, I think with Harvin, this is part of the reason he has been falling from a t uh, first half of the first round prospect to someone now that we're looking in that 25 to 32 range. And for Brandon Tate, in addition to his knee injury, it's just another thing that NFL teams are looking at. It wouldn't surprise me at all if Tate fell out of the first day. You uh, have on your latest draft, Harvin, 27th to the Colts. Right. Okay, and then Tate, second and round I don't, to the I, To Jets. be honest with you, the, in knowing the Indianapolis Colts the way I do, they will not draft Percy Harvin because of this character issue and because of uh, the two, the two -ish potential issues with him that I just mentioned. To me, it could be Indianapolis at 27. If it's not Indianapolis at 27, there's no other team really starving for a wide receiver after him. So if it gets down to that, maybe Harvin falls out of the first round. Well, that would certainly be a big story, day one of the draft.